Well, good morning, everybody. This is Brother Leslie Wiles, King James Bible Baptist Church, 1402 East Fulton Street, Garden City, Kansas. Yeah, it's Sunday, the 18th of October, the year of our Lord, 2020. It's 8.30 in the morning. Welcome to our online Bible study. Amen. Amen. He lives within my heart. Welcome, everybody. It is Sunday. Um, been kind of a rough week. I was under the weather for um, most of this week, you know, with um, stomach issue and um, other things. It wasn't the COVID, by the grace of God, so i um, a little stuffy yet still, so I apologize. Hey, listen, um, I need you all to lift up some people in prayer. There's a young lady named Carrie. She came up in here you know, months ago, and she got saved. She's struggling with drug and alcohol problems and a whole mess of problems, and she needs prayer. I, I don't know what more I can do for her. She needs to find a place where, you know, she needs to be in the hospital where she can dry out and and get some medical attention. You know, I, you know, I've talked to her and talked to her about it. Um, just pray for a young lady. Her name's Carrie. Just keep her in your prayers. Say, Lord, just... In fact, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer now, okay? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this time of fellowship, this online fellowship. Father, there's so many things going on in this world, so many hurting folks. Father, I want to lift up all the folks right now that are hurting, have lost their jobs because of this virus and because of all of the hysteria surrounding it lord i just pray that you bless the folks and give them jobs so they can support their families father father i pray for young carrie here the young girl who who's um she needs help lord um she needs she needs help medical help and all something lord you're the great physician father we just pray that you'd open doors and so she can get help lord Father, we also pray that you give me unction and anointing to preach and teach this word, Lord, that will not go out, will not come back void, that will go out and, and do what you need it to do, Lord. Father, open our minds and our hearts to your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right. I'm a little stuffed up. My sinuses are plugged up. So I apologize if, um, if I'm not sounding fit as a fiddle. <laughs> But listen, I get your um, Bibles, and I need you to turn to uh, Proverbs chapter 16. Now, this one scripture, it's found in two places. It's in Proverbs. Anyway, yeah, it's found in Proverbs chapter 16 and also chapter 14. And, um, you know, we'll go over both. King James Bibles, ready? Okay, get your King James Bible. If you got one, if not, get what you can. Follow along best you can. Okay, Proverbs 16, 25. Hear ye the word of the Lord from the King James Bible. Now, it says here, quote, There is a way that seemed right, seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Let's go back over that again. We're talking about the mind of man. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Okay, that's Proverbs 16, 25. Go to Proverbs 14, 12. Here we go. And it says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. All right, the ways of death indeed. Hang on one second. And I don't know why, you know, if it's Facebook or what, I think it's Satan wanting to stop the broadcast, but we're going to continue on because this message is extremely important. Okay, there's a way which seemed right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Well, how many times... How many times has mankind thought he knew what was best and wound up making a bigger mess out of his of life? 
We do that all the time. Anything that we do apart from God, we're going to fail. Anything that we do apart from God, we're going to fail. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end, therefore, are the ways of death. Because a man thinks with flesh, doesn't think with spiritual things. That's the problem. That is one of the biggest problems with mankind today. Oh, I can go it on my own. I don't need God. I don't need God. I don't need God. And you know what? People end up paying for it. You know, keep that one. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Now, seems right. What seems right? Seems right that, you know, if I just get my act together and turn over a new leaf, well, God's going to look at it and he's going to say, hmm, okay, well, you, you were good here. You were doing bad here. I'll just, I'll just weigh this and that and whichever weighs the most, you know, it, it doesn't work that way. Yet people think that way. Oh, I can get to heaven by being a good person, working hard, being nice. Going to church, giving money, getting baptized, getting confirmed. Sure seems right to me. I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. So you die and wind up in hell because you're not saved. Because back again. Let's back again. Proverbs. You know, guys, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There is a way that seemeth right unto the man, unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The ways of death. Let's go look. Let's go look. Go to First Corinthians chapter one. Let's go. Go on to verse 17. All right, this is Paul talking to the Corinthians. Now, you know, the thing about it is people need to realize, okay, that what we might think of as logical and what's right, apart from God's word, we're going to fall apart. Let me show you something. Verse 17, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath God not made the foolish the wisdom of this world? Amen, amen. Verse 21. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Wow. Let's go back over this. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Let's go to verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Indeed. Indeed, for the Jews require a sign, but the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks 
foolishness. But to them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, now that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him ye are in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness, and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. So it makes it clear. Paul talks about here, 1 Corinthians. That's God's wisdom. It's a preaching of the cross. That's foolishness. Foolishness to those people who are perishing. It is. But the fact that you and I know you and I know it's because of the cross. That's where we got to go for salvation. You know, if it wasn't for the cross, we'd all be hellbound, brothers and sisters, and you know that for a fact. There is a way. Let's go back over. Let's read it verbatim. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Oh, it seemeth right to sin. It seemeth right to do what I want. It seemeth right not to repent because I can't see God. So it just seemeth right for me to live how I wanted. And I died in my sin and went to hellfire. It sure seemed right. But in the end, <laughs> it led to your destruction. You know, how often times do we look at something, you know, it sounds like it makes sense. <coughs> it sounds like that's the thing to do. But then you look at it compared to what it's written in the Bible and you see something completely different, okay? You know, a lot of people don't like <laughs> some of my sermons. I tell it like it is. Yeah, it seems right. Sometimes it seems right, but then, but then we end up going down a road of destruction. Why? Well, Paul talks about it. It's the preaching. Okay, 1 Corinthians. Let's go back. But we preach Christ crucified. 1 Corinthians 23, chapter 1, verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto Greeks foolishness. Why Christ crucified? Because if you don't get to the cross, you can't get saved. You can't, if, you don't, if you can't get to the cross, that's where you got to go for salvation. You got to go there. Right at the cross, there's level ground. There's room for you, friend. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to get saved. Don't think it's your righteousness and your logic and your, oh, I've been listening to all sorts of philosophers. You think they're going to help you? They're going to send you straight to hell. They think they know. They don't know. They don't know. And the folks thinking it's foolishness. Why? It's foolish. Why would God step off of his throne? Why would God want to become a man and die for his wretched creation? Because he loves them. Because God loves his wretched creation. And I need some water here. <laughs> Why? What well, makes no sense? That makes no sense. That's foolishness. It sounds that way, don't it? Why would God Almighty, the creator of the universe, think about it, the creator who created the entire universe by the spoken word, talk about power. Someone so powerful, so holy, so 
beyond, beyond, you know, God is so powerful and holy, he's beyond our capacity to actually put him in any kind of box. <laughs> you ain't going to make it. But the fact is this, okay? We have a holy, holy, holy God. And he loves, he loves his creation, humanity. One reason we're special because we're created in his image. He is a triune being. He is Father, Son, Holy Ghost. He is the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. Three in one, one in three. The one in the middle, the Lord Jesus Christ died for me. Okay. I am also a trinity. I have a body, I have a soul, and I have a spirit. I am created in the image of God. And because of that, God loved me and God loved you so much. And he does, and the Bible makes it clear he wants none to perish and all to come to repentance. That means turning. That means turning to him from the road they're heading on. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ said, unless they repent, you shall all likewise perish. What does that mean, preacher? Repent. Repent means realizing you're going down the wrong road. And it's heading for your destruction that you need to make a turn. You know, again, let's go back over it. And I like reading it verbatim. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know, it sure made sense for me to go it on my own. You know, I, it really made sense when I thought, you know, why should I believe in a God that don't? I can't even see when logic and intelligence and science would tell me this and this and this. And so what happens? We allow that to be the, put it first, and then we wind up being in hell because we never get saved. Friends, let me tell you something. God became a man, and he became a man for one reason. Don't you change that channel. Don't you change that till I finish here. He became a man to keep you out of hellfire and me out of hellfire. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever and I'm talking any and all human beings on planet earth this message is for you. You better listen carefully. I'm going to shoot straight with you. I'm going to tell you this one time. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. We have eternal life. God became a man and paid it all. Why would God do that? Can you imagine the creator of heaven and earth steps off of his throne, allows his own creation to nail him to a tree, to brutalize him? God loved you that much, friend. That's right. God loved you that much. He still does. He still does. And my goodness, I'm getting a cramp in my leg here. <laughs> he still does. You know, we think about, I think about all sorts of crazy stuff sometimes. Sometimes stuff just pops into my head. and like, Lord, where did that come from? You know? And, you know, um, sometimes we look at things and it makes sense. And um, sometimes we look at stuff and it don't make sense. You know, here's the thing. We all prepare, or we all need to prepare. We all have insurance on our homes. We do. If you're a homeowner, you're smart. You better have insurance. If you have a car, <laughs> most places it's a law. You have to have car insurance. Why not eternal fire insurance? The fact that God became a man and paid it all on the cross, he made it so easy for you to get saved. That's a fact. There's no excuse you're going to have. Let me tell you something. Once you've died, once you've kicked the bucket, it's too late. You, you, you've already chose. Two places you're going to go, heaven or hell. You go to heaven by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross and nothing else. Nothing else. What he did and only what he did. And you're trusting your entire salvation, your entire eternity on what the Lord Jesus Christ done on that cross at Calvary. That's finished work. 
His suffering on the cross was not accidental. He went there willingly. That had to happen. He had to go through that for you and I to get saved. Okay? All that gruesome, from the beating to the scourging to walking to Calvary, all that he did for you and me so we can have eternal life. Oh, that sounds like foolishness. God, would God do that? Yeah, that sounds foolishness to a, to a heartless, unsaved heathen. Yeah, some of you are practicing religion. You've got some God or some deity up here, and you're trying to work your way up there, and you're working your way into hell, where God became a man and paid it all for you and I, thereby trusting in him and his finished work. You can have your salvation. But you know, some folks are just going to believe on their own righteousness. They're going to believe in their own logic and it's going to send them to hell. They're going to believe on that stuff. And it's going to send them straight to hell. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 14, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Wow. Practically almost exactly the same scripture. Same book, two different chapters. You know, we need to pay close attention to what God's word says so we don't be deceived. You know, we think it's right. Let me tell you something, friends. Don't ever, don't ever take my word for it. Oh, preacher, I believe y'all left my Bible at home. No, we better get your Bible. No, hold me accountable. Amen? Hold me accountable. You know, if they don't line up with Scripture and context rightly divided, it ain't true. Okay? You know, we need to we need to pursue not only God's righteousness, we need to pursue God's wisdom. How do we do that? By reading and studying his word. Asking the Lord to open up our minds and our hearts to his word. Lord, open my mind and my heart to your word. Therefore, so I can know what you have for me. Make the complicated easy to understand, Lord. I ask this in Jesus' name. He'll make it easy. But you got to have faith. Okay? Are you going to trust him and stand by his promises? Or are you going to trust the world? That's my question. Are you going to trust the world and its righteousness? Or are you going to trust um, Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, one or the other. You can't do both. You cannot do both. Let me tell you something. You cannot do both. Fence straddling is the worst of all. Fence straddling won't get you there. Oh, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know... I don't understand why some folks would choose death. Why folks would choose death over life. I'll never understand it. But sometimes folks would rather run with the devil. They would rather be deceived. They would rather believe a lie. Thinking that they can justify their sinful ways. Thus saith the Lord, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know, friends, let me tell you something. The Lord is very, very serious. When he died on the cross for you and I, he did it because he cared for you and I. Friend, you've got a decision to make right now. Let me tell you something. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Five minutes from now is guaranteed. 
If you were to die and you were to die in your sins, the hellfire eternity is where you would go. Why is that, preacher? Because you didn't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. When you believe and trust on the Lord Jesus Christ, you get washed in his precious blood. Precious. Why? Because it's the innocent Lamb of God who suffered on the cross to get your salvation. That's where you got to go. So when you turn and trust the one who paid it all, God Almighty on the cross, you get your salvation, friend. Oh, it's the greatest gift of all, and you can't lose it. The fact that God loved me so much, as sinful, as sorry as I was, I deserve hellfire. I deserve to be in Tartarus, the basement of hell. But yet God is faithful, and he loved me, and he saved my soul. And he can save you too, friend, right where you're sitting right now. You can ask the Lord Jesus Christ, say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Lord, help me. My life is a mess. I surrender right now to you. Lord, save me. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood and save me. Jesus' name. Just do it best way you can. Call upon his name today while you still have time. The smartest thing you'll ever do is trust the Lord for your salvation. And the most foolish thing of all to do is to trust anything else. Yeah, there's a way that seems right to a man, all right. And more often than not, it sends you straight down into the road of destruction. Well, you know, that road looked pretty good. That bridge looked pretty sturdy. I figured it would take the weight of my vehicle going over it. <laughs> you know, it was held up by a couple of threads, you know. You know, and that's how it is. You know, friends, let me tell you, the gospel is the most important thing, okay? People need to hear it. People need to get saved. You know... Sometimes I get a little carried away and think to myself, well, no, where, where, why aren't we folks getting saved, you know? And, you know, there's times where, you know, I'll be preaching and preaching and there'll be a no effect. That's just how it is. There's, there's a season for revival and there's a season for <laughs> kind of quiet and rejecting, I guess. Just like there's a time where, you know, the ministry will receive more blessings and, you know, coming close to the holidays... Um, doesn't, doesn't seem to get blessed quite as much and you know everything that's going on you know me as a minister me as an evangelist preaching the gospel you know my trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ my trust is in the calling that he has called me to win souls that's what I do you know I'm not ashamed of it I let people know I care about your soul that's what I care about I want to see you saved. I don't want to see you lost. I don't want to see you go to hell. I don't want to see anybody going to hell. That's why I do what I do. That's why I pound the pulpit, pound the table, preach the Bible, cause a little controversy, you know. Anytime you preach the truth in a world saturated with lies, it's going to be controversial. Anytime you step into the middle to try to make a difference, you're going to be controversial. Anytime you dare preach against sin and preach the truth from God's word, you're going to be controversial. Why? Because doing the right thing is controversial. Why? Because so many people are thinking they're doing the right thing and they end up going down a road of destruction. I can see why it's written twice. I can see why. And I'm going to quote it one more time and let this sit in your minds and let it sit in your hearts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Friends, I pray that you find life. Life is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. Jesus said, I am the way. He did not say, I am a way. He did not say, talk to my mother. He did not say that. And he certainly did not say, talk to the Pope. Okay? 
You people, if you're doing that, you need to turn to the one that can save you. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb of God who hung on the cross for your sins and mine. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, friend, and thou shalt be saved. Believe it. Friends, time is short. Do you want the Lord to come back quick? Would you like to see him come quick? You want, you want to be raptured out of here, brother and sister? Let's share this message. Let's get folks saved. We're all in it together. We're all working for one goal. To bring people to Jesus. We can't make anybody do it. I can't make anybody get saved. I can only tell you that God loves you. And the thing that you think is the right thing to do and the thing that you think is the most logical thing, apart from God's word, it will send you to hell and it will be your you'll be the author of your own demise. Friend, repent. Turn from the way you're living and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. He'll forgive you of your sins. He'll wash you in his precious blood. He'll give you new life. He'll take all the sadness that you have, all the guilt of the life that you've led in the past. He'll wash away your sins, take away your guilt, and give you a new life. He's not only able to forgive you of your sins and wash away your sins, he's able to forget that you've ever sinned. How God can forget. He can forget that you've ever sinned. When you turn your life to Jesus, one of these days I'll be in glory with the Lord. And I'll sit down with Jesus one day and I'll say, well, Lord Jesus, you know, I remember back when I was a young and I did this and that. And, oh, I, I feel so bad. I'm so sorry, Lord. And we'll be walking. We'll be walking in the garden one day holding hands. And they'll say, Leslie, I don't remember. You came to the cross. Did you not? Yes. Well, what, is it, what does it say? That I will forgive. Isn't that wonderful? That God can not only forgive you of your sins, but forget it ever happened. Who can do that but God? Friends, I'm going to tell you right now, if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you reject salvation. Hell is where you go, and rightfully so, and you will deserve it. Because God gave you an opportunity to get saved. He died on the cross for you. You have a decision to make, friend. I pray you trust the Lord Jesus Christ today for your salvation. Okay. I'm a straight shooter. I don't play around. I'm straight up serious. Why? Because time is short. You could drop dead of a heart attack right after this message. It's a dangerous world we live in, friend. Don't ever think for a minute that you're immune. None of us are immune. This is Brother Leslie Wiles, pastor, King James Bible Baptist Church, 1402 East Fulton Street, Garden City, Kansas. And I'm here to tell you, salvation is the greatest gift of all. Absolutely the greatest gift of all. Do not say no to Jesus. Give your heart and soul to the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to save you. Ask him to cleanse you. He will. He'll give you a new life. He'll give you a reason to go on. I promise you. This brother Leslie Wiles, until this evening, by the grace of God, will have their evening Bible study. May the Lord richly bless you all. And remember, please share this message to as many people as you can. You know a lost person that needs Jesus? Share the message with them. What about a mom and dad? You don't want mom and dad going to hell. Let them know. Let them know how much the Lord loves you, loves them. Let the, let the folks know what the Lord did for you. Sometimes your testimony is the best sermon of all. Please don't die without Jesus. I love you in the Lord. It's Brother Leslie. Till this evening. Peace.